Hey, I'm just chatting for now. I don't know if this is going to be an actual episode or not. But I let the doggie out. So she's she's outside doing her thing. And I just, you know, if anybody wanted to chat for a while, we'll just uh, chat for a while. Uh, if not, then okay. Um, don't really have anything more on my mind. It's kind of hard to have anything on my mind when it's full of Swiss cheese holes. So if I end up making this an episode of TN Talk Time, that's fine. If I don't, that's fine too. Or this could be just, just chatting. And it could be just chatting number one. Um, I'm keeping an eye on her. So I might have to get up and, and go uh, tend to her. Tend to her. Open the back door so she can get in. Okay? Okay. I'm just exploring my options. Right now, I'm uploading what I just did to YouTube. So I don't know if this is going to interfere with it. I don't know how these things work. So I might have just screwed up um, that because I'm streaming again. But... Um, I thought I'd give it a shot and see what's going on and, and, and she's back at the door so I'll be right back I'll be right back can I do this in chat I'm going to send a message oh no hi baby cold nose I'll be right back Yeah, I'll get you a cookie. Gotta close the back door first. girl okay got her cookie she's happy uh oh hello somebody's here hi i had to uh close the back door sahara just went out and uh came back in so i gave her a cookie and she's now comfortable on the couch bed bunk bed uh uh, yeah. Um, I just got done recording something, so I thought I'd stream for a while as I collect my thoughts and and uh, check something out to see if I, I'm uploading what I just did to YouTube. And I don't know if streaming again while that's still uploading, if that's going to screw things up. Hello, old person. You're right. Hi, Ron. How are you doing today? And yes, I am old. Are you old, too? You know, we never get younger. From the time we're born, we only get older. There's a psychological question for you. I need to put my foot up. I broke my foot. the end of August. I broke my foot. No, wait a minute. Maybe it was the end of September. Yeah, it was the end of September. Um, some people are born or old. Have you ever met somebody like that? Who they just... They're an old soul, is what we usually say. You have wrinkles on your mustache. Is that what you were trying to say? Mustache, mouse, moosh? I have no idea what that is. Um, but like I said, you know, we're old from the day from the day we're born. We we do nothing but get older. Uh, 
Yes, I was talking about my broken foot. Um, my sister and I just went out, and it's a pain to keep putting it up, but if I want it to heal, that's what they say I need to do is rest it. Rest it, ice it, it's a rice. They go use that word, that anagram. I think that's what it's called. Um, R-I-C-E, rest, ice, compression, uh, and elevate. So if I don't abide by the rules now, it's just going to make the healing even longer or could even complicate the healing. So I guess I better be a good girl, a good old girl, according to Ron. <laughs> Is it that obvious I'm old? Yes, it's that obvious. Inside, I'm still about maybe 32. Uh, but outside, it just doesn't match in the inside anymore. Too many warranties are running out. So, I was talking about my sister, and, you know, I finally looked up the, the reference to an ass speaking from the Bible, and uh, it was very interesting. I hadn't really retained that before. So, I finally looked it up, and one of the things that I was telling her about was the reference to uh, reincarnation. There's only one reference that I saw in the Bible. Uh, the um, Supposedly, one of the popes ordered a translation that took all... I don't know if they ordered a translation in the course of the translation, the pope said to take out all references to reincarnation because it would just make, make people just do whatever they want. Um, so I was telling this to my sister and she forgot that I had given her this scripture where in the course of a three-day period of time, I discovered and it was revealed to me that reincarnation exists because Jesus himself was saying when he was referring to John the Baptist that that was Elijah of which was foretold to come for those who have ears to hear let them hear okay that's a, a rough you know that's not verbatim because I don't remember things verbatim anymore not even with what I say so um, I reminded her that I had told her this once before Found the, the, the verse, gave it to her. She saw what I saw. She took it to her pastor, told her pastor the same thing. And her pastor, who's Baptist, said, we don't talk about that. I mentioned it to her again today. Don't mind the ringing. I have an answering machine. I talked uh, to her about it today, and she, did, she doesn't remember that. So, she said, send it to her. So, I need to look that up. This is a, a little notebook that I had used once. Those are usually just the spam callers and stuff, so I, I ain't going to pay any attention to it. Sorry if it bothers you. Okay. In Malachi 4, 5, from what I wrote down in my notes, so this may not be verbatim, I will send you Elijah before coming of the Lord. Matthew eleven fourteen. If you will receive it, this is Eli Elias is how it's, it's said there. So let me find it. And let's just clear this up together, okay? didn't know you were going to get a Bible lesson today, did you? Speaking of that, I'm thinking of doing a, learning how to do a, either a, a, like a Zoom room gathering or a small in-house gathering. So Matthew eleven fourteen. 
Matthew. Oh, Matthew. 11. Matthew 11. Here's 11. And 14. Well, this isn't the one with the ears who have... E oh, actually, 15 is where it says that. Okay, let me back up a little bit. This is Jesus talking. And I'll start with 11, chapter 11, 11. Those are good numbers. 11, 11 in Matthew. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women... There hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if ye will receive it, this is 11.14, if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Sounds like reincarnation to me. Okay, somebody wants to know, how do I feel about gay people? Well, A, he who is without sin cast the first stone. Nobody can do that. B, scripturally, there shouldn't be gay people. But scripturally, there shouldn't be lying, stealing, murder, coveting, any of that stuff. So gay people are people. Period. If they treat me with respect and understanding and kindness, I will, I will treat them with respect, kindness, and understanding. God's the one who does the final judgment there. God's the one who's going to do the final judgment on me. I'm not responsible for what other people say and do. I'm responsible for what I say and do. Um... That's how I feel about it. They're people. Everybody's people. And when you stop treating people like people and just things or sayings or slogan or whatever, you know, that's where you're going wrong. I don't have the right to judge anybody because I don't know their heart. Only God knows their hearts. God doesn't know what kind. We were just talking about reincarnation. So here's a good thing. Um... When, if you believe in reincarnation, which I do, when you come back, there's usually a reason for it. There's usually some kind of understanding, some kind of lessons that you need to learn and process uh, in this world that you can't in the spirit world. So who knows? Having to deal with the trauma and the stigma of uh, being gay or handicapped or, you know, whatever that's part of the lesson they need to learn for some reason. I'm guessing that's as far as far as I, I, I can tell uh, in my own life. Okay, what did I do wrong before or didn't learn last time that I'm still trying to learn this time? All of life is a lesson in my mind. Um, we're, we're constantly learning how to do better, hopefully do better, be better, evolve. Um, learn to be compassionate. A lot of times we don't, we, we, a lot of times even when we do, it doesn't work. But a lot of times we don't understand where somebody's coming from until we walk in their shoes. We don't understand how somebody feels until that exact same thing happened to us. Um, I was using the example, the trauma that I went through when, uh, not this pooch, but, uh, uh, Tramp, uh, because I procrastinated taking him to the vet for far too long. You know, he really had a bad ending. And I was so traumatized by it. I then realized how somebody else must feel in that instance where you can't even 
comprehend the need to ask for help. You, you can't, mentally, you're just not there. You're just so stuck. You can't break out of it. So that impressed upon me the need to pray for other people who were in that instance. Um, to, for, for God to send them help that they need. Uh, thank God there were people around me at the time who recognized my inability to function and stepped in and, and helped with the situation. But there might be people who don't know how to do that, who don't know how, and, and because I went through that, I could see it from somebody else's eyes. There are some people who even no matter how much crap they go through, uh, they, they can't be compassionate for somebody else, and I don't understand that. I know what it's like to go through pain and suffering and, and everything, and I don't wish that on anybody. So, you know, who knows? So when it comes to different things like that, I can't judge. I don't know what's really going on with that person. All I can do is be nice and supportive and, you know, whatever. Do I think they're likely to get into heaven? And do you think the real world is more interesting than the spirit world? Oh, uh, well, that's a complex one. So I'll address the first thing first. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, do I think they're likely to get into heaven? Well, if they're not, then I won't either. Sin is sin. Okay, I mean, you know, brass tacks here. If God says thou shalt not, and you do, you're committing a sin. Thou shalt not lie. I say white lies. I don't, I try not to outright lie. And the white lies are usually to avoid hurting someone's feelings. I try not to steal. Other than swiping a pen here and there. But not usually on purpose. You know, that's a sin. Sin is sin, whether it's just an itty-bitty little thing or a big thing. So if they can't get into heaven, then neither, neither can I. Uh, the other question is, do you think the real world is more interesting than the spirit world? No. The real world, which is what we call the real world, the physical world, Let's, let, let's say it that way. And hello to Kakamani. Is that right? Kakamane? Um, anyway, the real world is the physical world to me. And the physical world is full of stuff that either doesn't exist in the spiritual world or exists better in the spiritual world. They say, people who have had the near-death experiences, they say everything's more vivid, more bright, more intense, more colorful in the spiritual world. Like, let's say, nature. You know, flowers and grass and light and color and stuff like that is more intense in the spiritual world. Spirit world seems like a permanent vacation <laughs> for infinite. Nothing happens except relaxing. It would get boring after a while. Um, I can understand why we think that because we haven't experienced it yet. We don't have the, 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 the concept of the fullness of it. It would be... Some of the stories that I've heard of near-death experiences is that it is so intense, so wonderful, so fulfilling. That's what I've heard. I haven't experienced it myself. There are different aspects that are available in the spirit world that we don't have here on earth unless we have uh, raised our vibration to a higher level. And even then, we're not going to experience it until we cross over. But there's a reason for the physical world. Um, because like I said, I believe in reincarnation. So we come back. And we can only learn certain things here 
that we can't learn in spirit. Maybe part of that is because in, this, in, in spirit, we have all the answers. We know, it's like knowing some, it's like book smarts and street smarts. Book smarts is that, you know, we read about it, we understand it. Logically speaking, we, we know all about it. But until you experience it yourself, until you apply it in the real world, it's a whole different situation. So in the spirit world, we know everything. But in the physical world, okay, a, do you remember it? B, you have to learn it again. And C, you have to apply it because it's different here than it is there. So, you know, it's a little bit of both. Do I get sad over the fact that pets aren't able to get into the spirit world? Well, have I got a revelation for you. Uh, animals do make it. Um... I can only tell you from my experience and what I've seen and learned. Um, my dogs come visit me uh, in dream time, uh, sometimes physically. I had one dog punch me in the, with the nose uh, in the back of my knee and almost made me fall down. And that's something that she would do to get my attention in, in the real world. Um, I have had a couple readings with someone who, do, who, who works with the angels, and that's, that's who she goes through to get spiritual information. And she had, um, uh, I, uh, it, was, it wasn't long after my mom crossed over, maybe within six months or a year. Yeah, six months or a year. And... Um, she described what she saw. She saw mom sitting there petting a cat. And at first I immediately thought of my sister's, my younger sister's cat. She's crossed over since. But my younger sister's cat. But then I remember cat bird, CB. It was a cat she found in a bird's nest. So she called her cat bird, CB for short. And I was so pleased to know that they were together again because on some level, uh, CB was very much a comfort to my mom as um, she had Alzheimer's. And uh, toward the end, you know, she was in her confusion, she would throw the cat outside or she would try to overfeed it or she would do this, that or the other thing. And basically abusing the poor cat. But she wasn't in her right mind. So it tickled me to death to know that she was sitting in mom's lap and, and, and mom's sitting, oh, oh. And she, you know, she's, things are being revealed to her and she's understanding stuff she didn't understand before. Uh, she didn't like the fact my father was there. But, you know, she was going through all this stuff. So I, I, I believe this lady because she was pretty much spot on when it came, came to me. So that was encouraging. And there was one other thing when you said that there was a time where I, I you know, there's a, a phrase in, in, in the Bible about uh, the end times and about the dogs barking outside the gates. And I thought that was meaning that animals didn't go to heaven. I don't believe that anymore. There's an event today at 630. I have no idea what that was. Um, so I, I was thinking the same thing that pets didn't go to heaven because I had read that phrase, but I didn't understand it. Um, it was only referring to, you know, like strays and, and, and other things because I work with the spirit of woof, woof, I can't say it right. I know God God made all the animals. I know there is a connection there. I know if they exist here, they exist in heaven. Um, I know that I, my, I, they've been my sanity in most of my adult life. Um, I'm just now learning a lot of the crap that I went through 
Um, I'm seeing a counselor, matter of fact, to see him tomorrow, see her tomorrow. And the importance of that companionship and that they're sharing their journey with you. And that's why I have developed the habit of when they do cross over is I thank them because they've been such a blessing to me uh, in ways that I, I, I'm probably not even aware of. So yes, I believe that your pets go to heaven. Um, I would love to know where the original concept of the rainbow bridge is, where they wait for you, and then when you come home to heaven, you know, they greet you. I have a whole zoo waiting for me. Um, I would love to know where that first started, and I would love to know the actual truth of it. I may not know until I cross over myself, but yes, I believe that, that animals or your pets uh, are in heaven. Uh, very strongly, there was no indication that, that no signal I could have given that lady who did the, the reading with me for her to, to know that, you know, my mom had a cat. A, I didn't tell her that my mom died, so, you know, when she showed up, it was like, oh, okay. Um, so, yeah, I am of the belief that, that they're there waiting for us. Do I think if the scriptures are wrong about that, they may be incorrect about other things? I think the, the, the one uh, reference that I just said about them barking outside the gates, I believe that's like a metaphor. I be believe that's like, okay, we... Um, I really hate to talk about scripture because I'm really bad at it and I don't want to misquote anything. Um, but I believe in that particular instance, what it was referring to was like when you have. Back in those days, um, they had gates and stuff and walls around the city. And all the strays and the riffraff and stuff like that was outside. And I think that's what they were referring to uh, with the image of the dogs barking outside the gate. Um, was that kind of scenario, that kind of situation um, where the strays, the wildlife, the, you know, whatever, uh, the bad things are outside the gates. You know, you're inside, you're protected, you know, taken care of, your pets are with you. Um, so I think that's what it was referring to. So it's not always that the scripture is wrong, but that we don't rightly discern what the scripture is saying. Um, we don't fully understand what they were referring to because, you know, this stuff was written, what, 2,000 years ago? And what was the cultural norm then that they refer to in the way they talk and what's going on is not necessarily the norm, you know, we don't, you know, I, People have trouble reading Shakespeare, for crying out loud, and that's only a couple hundred years old. When was Shakespeare around? So anyway, I think, I think that's where it comes from. I think when it comes to listening to someone, um, a, a preacher, pastor, whatever, I believe you should rightly discern the word of God yourself as well. Don't just take it. Um, what somebody else says, and that includes me as well. You know, look it up yourself. Search it out yourself. Research it yourself. Go by your intuition. If you have any questions, then leave it alone or search more. Um, but that's how I see it. Uh, I may be wrong. I may be right. You know, um, as to other things being incorrect, I don't trust easy, and when I read or understood that the popes have not always been on the up and up, and that the popes removed all reference to reincarnation, not the popes, one pope in particular during a translation um, pulled out all reference to reincarnation. 
he's going to answer for that because you're not supposed to mess with the word but an, but scripturally the basics are there and when you put them in proper context as to what was going on at the time there's that if somebody has changed it God will fix it God will adjust in whenever you're reading hi there King Slayer and um, you know you take it from there you have to have faith you have to know God will fill in the blanks if you have any questions God will lead you in the right direction to get the answer whether directly or through somebody else that's how I feel you're very interesting to talk to um, yeah so uh, th that's that's where I am at on it I really should read more how does a person my age find their way to what oh to twitch ha <laughs> ha well, there's a story for you. That would because, be because of Buckeye Breeze, who happens to be my grandson. Now, my grandson has been game playing and recording it. I forget what it's called. For many years. About two or three years ago, he was on Twitch, I guess. And he saw Critical Role. And we role play here. At least we used to. Uh, not so much in the last year or two. But at the time, you know, we, uh, uh, we've role played off and on for decades. And he came across Critical Role. And that introduced my oldest son to the new... D&D 5e version which is a lot easier to deal with than the other versions and so he got inspired uh, through my grandson and Critical Role to start D&D &D playing again so um, I started watching Critical Role with my grandson uh, it, it became a weekly thing he'd come over he'd spend the night we'd watch critical role until he passed out because he was still in school and you know that was a point of connection well because of what he did then that got me I had been since 2014 about five years six years five four um, I had been doing YouTube uh, he helped me get set up on YouTube uh, with my tea and talk time. And that was just an opportunity. I felt like I didn't have a voice. Being older, I felt like I didn't have a voice anymore. You know, we don't register in the demographics anymore because, you know, we're, we're off the scale. We're not the people that are um, targeted. So it was a way for me to have a voice. And I started tea and talk time. And he helped me start it. You know, I don't have the mug here. Uh, but he helped me uh, generate the, the graphics and everything, how I originally started. Don't do all that anymore. But it was a way for me to, to talk to somebody. And I'm not used to the live streaming, so I'm really bad about paying attention to people who stop by because I don't always see it. I'm just busy running off at the mouth. So he helped me with that, and then I said, well, you know, he, he, he streams on, on, on Twitch. And so, you know, I, I had the bug to, to try it, to see how it goes. And here I am. Yeah, it will get better the more I do it. Um... And he has been so good uh, helping me with so much stuff. 
there's a new update for my OBS, my operating system. And I'm afraid to use it because it changes settings. And he's off in college now. He had already done two years of college here locally. But now he's away from home doing his uh, final two years of college. And so he's not available for me to go, uh, <coughs> come help me. Um, so I'm afraid to do an update on it and because it's liable to change things and I won't know what to change back. So we'll see whether I, how long I ignore it or I'll wait until he comes home and then have him go through everything and make sure uh, it's in the proper situation. So, yeah. Okay. Um, I'll, ju I'll just ramble on while you do that. Uh, my doggy, I just let out to go pee. And Kingslayer is going to go pee. Oh, there's a blue jay. So now, see, that's something else. I think God can talk to us no matter where we are and no matter what we're doing. Um, and he sends messages all the time. If something inspires you and makes you happy, uh, it may have been a message from you-know-who. So that's pretty good. What was I going to look up? I don't know. But look at all the dog hair. I got to go through and de-hair the house because she was shedding. So that was fun. So I'm thinking of, like I said, either starting a Zoom room prayer group, you know, just to talk spiritual stuff. Maybe I should just do it here, you know, and, and, and that would be in the, okay, we're going to do a little bit of spiritual research. I might as well. Um... Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to make any of this a, a, I might go through and edit it and make a version for tea and talk time. We'll see. We'll see. I, I, I don't know. I, I just wanted to spend some more time online while I was excellent. What's my stream health? Is excellent. But I'm, I'm still learning all this stuff. I'm still getting the hang of it, like Kingslayer said. Uh, the more you do, the better at it you get. And, it, and it's true. I tried to do, when I originally came up with this whole thing, a tea and talk time, I eventually wanted to get to the point where I could, you know, go out, go out and about and record and and share you know some of the local parks and different things but i never had the capability uh i i had a laptop for a while but i i, I didn't follow through on doing recordings and stuff you know i didn't everything was discombobulated so I tried doing that the other day. Uh, they now have those sticks that you can put your phone on and record. Well, it recorded all right, but I probably put the controller in the wrong thing, and it, and it messed up the audio, and sometimes it was upside down, and sometimes it was this way, and, you know, it was a mess. <laughs> Uh, glad you're back. Um, I've just been rambling about when I first started doing tea and talk time, I wanted to be able to be mobile with it. And I didn't have the means to do it then. And since then, you know, we can record on our phone now. And I, I did a couple things like that on the phone. Um, and then I didn't have a car. So um, it was tricky. Um, it's almost six o'clock here. I'm Eastern Standard Time. What time are you? Eastern Standard? Yeah. Or daily? I'm in the East. 
of the United States. So why do you ask? Are you, is it, you wondering what time difference there might be? Oh, you're in Europe. Well, hi. Yeah, Twitch is pretty cool. Um, it's interesting. So do you have trouble sleeping at night? Or are you a night bird? Or, um... It's real easy for me to be up late in my own time zone. Um, and the more I am, the later up I am. And it's something I'm talking with my counselor about is, is why don't I want to go to sleep at night? I know part of it was I would be busy during the day when I was raising my kids. And that was my quiet time. That was the only time I had for myself. And then I got involved in um, theater stuff. And most theater people are night birds. Uh, because, you know, you do a performance and you're all wound up. And then, you know, if you're, depending on the group of people, you know, you might uh, go out to a bar or whatever. And so you're up for a couple more hours and then you go home and then, you know, you have to wind down from that. So it's always been real easy, even before I got involved in theater, to do that. Um, I'm not involved in theater anymore. Uh, uh, physically, I can't do it anymore. So... Um, some people just need that quiet time where all the noise from the day is, is kind of pushed aside. Do you find that's true for you? Jazz hands. Sorry, I just saw myself in, in the monitor and that's what it reminded me of. Yeah, that's an old habit. That's an old bad habit in my mind. Um, I'm trying to figure out, you know, what it is. What uh, I had a traumatic childhood, and I only know the half of it so far. Uh, so that's left a lot of problems, uh, things that I need to work out and figure out, and and stuff and I'm trying to figure out how much of there are times where I just refuse to go to bed and I don't know if things happened to me when I was a kid uh, at night uh, trust issue you know it's not safe to go to bed it's safer to, to sleep during the day because then you know I don't know so I'm still trying to figure that out so I don't know perhaps that's something you need to check into uh, usually, there's a reason for everything. And if it's something that you're, you're the only one who can determine whether it's something that you need to address, something you need to change, and if it's something you need to change, then you need to find positive reinforcement for that change. And if it's a counselor, I'm of the, the belief now that counselors... are such a benefit because they have objectivity. They can give you a different perspective. And if it's a good counselor, they'll give you several perspectives until one fits right for you. Um, they can give you tools to deal with whatever you're dealing with. For instance, with me, with my chronic fatigue, I just don't have energy anymore. I, I you know, I have this amount of energy. So I can only do this amount of things. Now the amount of energy I have day to day, even hour to hour can change. It can go down to just this. So my priorities are according to how much energy I have. And one of my counselors told me something that has stuck with me. And um, he was like one of the first counselors I had. Excuse me, he said, your 100% today is going to look different than your 100% yesterday and your 100% tomorrow. So you have to take the judgment out. 
because you have no control over that. I have no control over how much energy I have to use every day. So today I can do this amount. Might not be able to do as much tomorrow. Certainly couldn't do this much yesterday. But this is my 100%. And, and that's all I can go by is the 100% I have to use today. So that takes a lot of guilt away from the equation so that you're not burdening yourself with more stuff than you need to. What are you pacifying? That, that's what I would wonder. You, you're self-medicating for some reason. So why? The, um, in my experience, and from what I've seen, um, it's a pacifier. And that means you're lacking something somewhere. That means you're self-medicating. That means you have a wound that's not being addressed. Um, when you can get to the point where uh, um, where you can step back from it and start analyzing what's beneath it. Like people who, who um, brain's not working. People who, who uh, beneath outburst, beneath anger, when you, you start peeling back the layers, you know, there's fear. So what are you afraid of losing? You know, there's, that, that's where seeing a psychologist is, is so beneficial, is it helps you get past yourself. And I, we've been peeling back the onion on, on, on me for a while now. And, you know, it's a little scary. But it's like, okay, you, finding the source of an issue can get rid of the, the problem. It's like, okay, uh, trying to think of a good analogy where, you know, on the surface, you know, Band-Aids don't help, you know. Uh, for instance, you've got a wide open cut and you keep slapping band-aids on it, band-aids, band-aids on it, and then, and wrapping it up and then changing the dressing, but you're not cleaning out the wound, suturing it up and then putting a dressing on it. So it's not going to heal until you take care of what the source of the problem is. The source of all this bleeding and smelly stuff is that you haven't cleaned out the wound and sewed it up so it could heal. So I think it's the same thing. Oh, that is funny. Papillon. Papa, right? Papillon? Hey, Nana, so what do you call a dog that can do magic? A uh, labracadabrador. I actually said the word. That's funny. Yeah, I like that. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome for the analogy. Um, that that's what I'm that's what I'm learning. Uh, so getting old pays pays off sometimes. Uh, but you can't heal until you find the source of the problem. And that's how it goes. And Papillon, I believe laughter is God's medicine. So the little bit of joy and everything that you just shared, thank you very much. A, lab, a Labrador, wait, a Labra Cadabrador. I said it right the first time. Now I can't say it. And I love, I was talking about my Labrador earlier. I had a yellow lab named Zeus and he was such a buddy to me. Um, so Labradors, you know, that's a special, makes me smile. That, that little heart smile there. So that's cool. Thank you very much.
I appreciate it. Well, it's, it's time for me to go. I appreciate people stopping by. Thank you, Kingslayer. Thank you, Papillon, for that. That is, that is, I appreciate that. I might be on again tomorrow around this time, a little bit earlier. I have a doctor's appointment, and then I have to go get an x-ray done. And see, part of the problem for me not being on a lot is because I only got X amount of energy. Um, if I have enough energy to put my teeth in, um, be halfway stressed and halfway coherent, then then I'll, I'll I'll be online. What helps, like today, I was already out, so it's like okay, let's go ahead and do something today, tomorrow. I have an appointment with my counselor. I highly recommend counselors. Uh, sometimes it takes more than one counselor to get a good fit. Um, but I see my counselor tomorrow and then I have an x-ray. So I'll already be decent. Um, so I may come on again tomorrow, probably around four. Uh, give my doggy time to go do her business once I get home. I hope you can uh, pop in again tomorrow. Uh, if not, maybe we'll catch you another time. And Papillon, thank you. I appreciate that. And we'll see what kind of yakking we can do tomorrow. So in the meantime, I want everyone to take care. Think positive. And God bless. So we'll talk again soon. Bye-bye.